Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge in the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2022 start of the FedEx Cup playoffs, and that is kicking off with the St. Jude Classic. This is going to be an all-inclusive show because I'm only doing one for this event. This is going to be my preview show. I'm going to give you my top 20 picks. We are going to go over all the analysis of the players. We're going to look at ownership projections. I'm going to talk about weather. Again, this is all on Tuesday, but this is the only time I had to get this all together for you guys. So that said, first and foremost, thanks for stopping by. Give me a few minutes. With that said, let's go talk a little golf. All right, so real quick, I am going to recap the window. I'm going to take a second to do this because it's already been, it feels like forever. It's Tuesday. It's pretty shocking that Tom came to me, actually won this event. And the reason why I say that as a 20-year-old rookie uh winning so early on i mean literally he just got temporary status i think like the tournament before and then the next tournament he goes out and win now again he was showing good form but it's impressive you've never won a tournament in that early in in your pga career to go out and win one. so this guy is definitely a talent that we will be keeping our eyes on also from a betting side i think he was like 30 or 33 to 1. i looked at it of course like i said we've been seeing a lot of good things out of him but i just couldn't pull the trigger on a bet that a guy would actually win outright and it was a you know, not a strong field, but there are some players there that definitely we thought could pull it out. Uh, with that said, I think, you know, I pulled in some things that I thought were interesting. Of course, uh, Tom Kim uh, was the first player in PJ history since they've been tracking the data since 1983 to come out and make a quad uh, of a post a snowman on the first hole and then actually win the tournament. Um, I'll be honest, I was actually at a kind of a golf outing with a bunch of friends uh, up north here. And got to watch, we watched a bit of the golf, but, you know, not as much as I typically do. But it was kind of crazy um, when I actually tuned in and saw the leaderboard with Sun JM and Kim and Ha and uh, I think Kyrdek, Apri Barnett. Like, there was a lot of the Asian players that uh, that were up there on the leaderboard for a minute there. I was, I'll say, I was just a bit shocked. We'll put it that way. And then uh, also with what we're talking about here with the FedEx Cup playoffs, you've got... Uh, of course, a couple of guys that moved in, which Tom Kim is one of them, who was not going to be in the FedEx Cup playoffs because literally he needed a win uh, was the only way we think about like Will Zalatoris, who also had temporary status without a win, could not get into the FedEx Cup playoffs. But that win, the last regular season event, uh, got him into the FedEx Cup playoffs. And then, of course, Max McGreevy, uh, who entered at 126, moved up. And then uh, real quick, we can see some of the guys that moved out and moved in. So Ricky Fowler was right on the bubble. Austin Smotherman was literally the bubble. I think Ricky was like 126, 127, uh, was able to move up. And then Smotherman, which if I remember correctly, literally double bogeyed his last hole, which knocked him out. Um, so there was some guys that, you know, like I said, that were on the bubble that did play pretty well and uh, got to move themselves up. And then, of course, you had some guys that moved down. All in all, like I said, you know, for the Wyndham, it was, uh, for me, from a DFS fantasy perspective, is the lightest I've been all year I uh, did have a, quite a few bets out there but again nothing that came to fruition uh, we were hoping on Blackbeard but he fell apart if I remember right on Friday and didn't make the cut Richard Rorinsky another super long shot actually didn't have a bad tournament uh, trying to get Russ Henley to finally win he was you know back and forth and honestly if I remember right on Saturday he just could not make putts um, he had so many opportunities that I didn't even look to see where his stroking came in on the putting side but what I got to see well, just the eyes told me that he was hitting amazing iron shots and just missing putts. All right, that's enough of the Wyndham, and I hope you guys had a good Wyndham. Uh, from my pick standpoint, I, again, if I remember right, on the guys that I had, I think somewhere around, I don't know, like a B minus, C plus is where I felt, again, that I didn't have Tom Kim, and I didn't actually have Sun JM. One of you guys out there asked me, uh, Shane Lowry or Sun JM, and I apologize now that I think I said to go with Shane Lowry, who's who I liked. But, you know, if you look at a couple of factors, right, I mean, he didn't have his clubs all the way until like the day before. And then he literally, what, left the event, went back home, which I, I'm thinking he flew across the pond. I don't know where he went. Oh, well, I wouldn't think across the pond because he had the FedEx Cup coming here. And then had to grab a private jet fly back because, of course, all that movement that we were just talking about uh, took the actual, I think, which was Smotherman, double bogey, and I think took the line and moved it to instead of two under to one under, in which you guys might have had the same the few teams that I did put in the large game, I had a couple six to six teams who didn't even uh, make min cash, which that's a rarity uh, that happened. So I just showed you, I think there was what, 88 players, maybe the most this year that made the cut. 
So, all right, that's enough on the window. Let's go talk about the first event, the first leg of the FedEx Cup, which used to be always the Northern Trust, but is now the St. Jude Classic, which we used to always watch as a WGC event, which was a no-cut event, somewhere between 60-some guys to 80. So it was always a really strong field. I still honestly can't. I'm still bitter about Sammy Burns missing the inside to Abe Answer. I think it was a three-footer. Getting to get, you know, got to watch the read from Abraham Answer, but if you remember right, the putt literally went in the hole, did a button hook, came back out, and of course Abe Answer won. So this tournament brings up some bad memories because I had a nice little bet on Mr. Sammy Burns. With all that said, we are heading to the hot Memphis, Tennessee. Of course, the course that we're going to be looking at is TPC Southwind. Make sure if you're using any tools, especially Fantasy National, it was going to be tuned in to the Northern Trust, I noticed. Even when we look through tournament uh, history, we got to watch that when we get into the player analysis. Again, the course that you want to focus on is TPC Southwind. The St. Jude's been here for a long time, I think for the past 30 years, and it became a WGC event back in 2019. So you also will see different kind of information when you see 2018, uh, like from a cut, what was a cut perspective. Your architect was a Ron Prashard back in 1988, and we are at a par 70 so only two par fives, and it's very typical. I think four par threes, and we can go into the scorecard and we'll look at that. And it's at uh, playing at 7,243 yards. Uh, a difference of 10 yards was added comparative to last year. It was playing at 7,233, and that literally is just 10 yards on the par three, number 14th. You're looking at fairways or Azoiza grass. The rough's coming in at two and a half, and it is Bermuda, and we are again back on Bermuda Greens, which, of course, last week we were too, but for a while there, we were on bent for like eight or nine tournaments, if you don't include the PGA uh, Championship. The player field is coming in at 122 players, which typically is 125, but there's a few guys that have bailed out. Uh, we know Daniel Berger, of course, was eligible, but because of the back, he is still not playing, and honestly... He's done a ton of damage at this course. It would be a great bet and play, but you'd be a little wary about, you know, where exactly the back is if he was in the field. So he's out. You got Tommy Fleetwood, who I have no reason why he's out, and Lanto Griffin. I don't know why those two guys, I'm guessing it's due to issues with the health. I mean, maybe Tommy is something to do with the live tour, but Lanto Griffin for sure making this. Uh, it's a, you know, for sure I'm pretty, if I remember correctly, I think everyone gets some kind of a paycheck for this first event. So if you use the 2018, there was a cut, right? So I mentioned this was WGC event, no cut for the past few years. But back, if you go back and try to figure out the cut line uh, from 2018, 2017, it's about plus one to plus two. And I already talked about, you know, last year, of course, uh, the winning score was 16 under. And you had, what, Hideki Masayama, you had Sammy Burns and Abe Answer that made the playoffs, which was crazy also about that. Um, and I think I make this note below is that, Harris English actually led this tournament from uh, day one uh, all the way going into the morning and actually got the 20 under on Sunday and then fell back quite a bit. I think even DeChambeau was up there and he fell back and these guys were not even really in the picture at all. Like um, I know for sure Hideki, I think he shot like a 63 on Sunday, but he was not in the picture. And then also next thing you know, he's in a playoff and he also lipped out. Uh, on a couple, of the, or at least the first playoff hole that I remember uh, to win that thing. Okay, also before that, you had JT uh, went at 13 under, and before that was Brooks, and again, this is a focus. Well, now I'm starting to question myself, but I, I think, yeah, this would have been at the St. Jude at TPC Southwind, just under the WGC format. Okay, we are looking at some very small greens, as far as I'm concerned, at 4,300 square feet, uh, so that's the average green side. So typically, what does that mean? Approach and around the green is going to come into play. We've got 75 sand bunkers spread around this course, and we do have quite a bit of water comparative. Uh, we got 11 water, uh, 11 actual bodies of water out there, if you want to say, and 11 holes come into play uh, for water. So again, you have to watch that. And again, if I remember, um, we'll talk while I'm, when I get into the course map layout. We'll get into that. Uh, these are fast Bermuda greens, typically somewhere around 12 and a half is where they're going to be running on a stem meter. And then, of course, defense, I already mentioned small greens. These are, I think, about 22 acres of actual fairways, which is pretty low. What does that mean? It means you're going to have tight fairways, tree line. There's also a fescue. So if you get outside the rough line, you're actually in this very tall fescue like what you'd see at the open. 
And then I already mentioned water protecting some greens and uh, also protection of this course is some very long par fours, which we will make sure we look at when we do the model. And then just some notes I had in the past that uh, Cam Smith actually set the PGA Tour record in round two, literally making 18 putts for 18 holes. Um, and then I already talked about the Harris English thing. And then just from my own side, it was a, you know, these guys got to be good around the green and driving accuracy definitely is better than having length over and over. What I'll show is that approach is king, which is pretty much typical for almost all golf courses. All right, so a quick layout, and uh, there's not a whole lot. All I want you to see here is kind of how this lays. So you can see quite a bit of water, 11. It actually have an island green. We're going to talk about that in a second. Very similar to number 17 at the uh, players. Uh, but you can see water here on three, water on four. Looks like water protecting nine. And I guess maybe could come into play on one. I, I don't know how far that distance is. I doubt it. A um, little bit of water again. So you can see where the water kind of comes in is typically around the greens. And it looks like here you got a creek that runs through on 15 and maybe a little more creeks right here. So, and oh yeah, water protecting on 18, the whole fairway all the way to the green. So again, accuracy off the tee and accuracy on approach is going to be king. And I put this in, I thought this is, it was actually just got reminded that um, last Siwoo Kim, which that brings up a whole different topic back to the Wyndham. Of course, he was, I believe, one of my picks. And I even bet him outright, and I used him in one and done. And if you used him in one and done, what you'll know is that he withdrew somewhere on the back nine on Sunday for whatever reason, and which then you would have gotten some money against your one and done. But because he withdrew, you received no money against your one and done. And uh, of course, if you played him like in showdown on Sunday, you would have been maybe a little bitter. But he went ahead and on the the number hole, what was I saying? Uh, was it 11? Went and posted a nice little 13, which reminds me quite a bit of like when um, Kevin Na on number 17 at the players and then literally withdrew from the tournament right after. But uh, I just, again, what I'm getting to is that there are some holes out here that can cause some issues. And thank you, Siwoo Kim, for last week. So that's why I put this up because I'm still a little bitter at him for, as a typical, as I've always said, if I don't play Siwoo, he'll do pretty well. And if I do play Siwoo, Forget about it. All right, real quick, we'll take a look at the scorecard here. It's a pretty gentle handshake. You could hit that consecutive birdie bonus right out of the gate here. Not too dissimilar what we just saw at uh, the Wyndham, where it seemed like the front nine, right, they could do a lot of damage. And then, of course, they got that 10, 11, 12 is where the issues typically happen. And you could kind of see it's that last finishing two holes uh, that could really cause some issues. I mentioned these very long par four. So there's one at around 500. Yeah, one at 472. Uh, 465, a 457, a 482. So really that's the, kind of the defense also this course. It's got two long par threes and then two kind of just, you know, humdrum. When I say long par threes, was it about 200 yards and one's I think a little over 200 yards. Nope, just at 200 each and then one's at 162. So I'm not so much concerned about the par threes, um, but what it tells me right away when I look at this scorecard, if you knew nothing else, that you're going to have to have very good ball strikers because you're going to be coming in because guys are not going to be hitting driver on every hole because they have to be accurate and they have to not stay out of the water, which means they're going to have longer distances coming in. And so the 175 to 200 and the 150 to 175 are going to be very prevalent. And whenever that shows up, you need good ball strikers. So how do you win this thing with that kind of conversation I was just having? As always, I provide you a stroke gain analysis ranking. What is the skill set that I think to you need to be able to win at St. Jude, the FedEx? Uh, at TPC Southland, number one, I already mentioned ball uh, approach and ball striking second. Of course, ball striking combines off the tee with approach. And you could literally flip flop those 1A, 1B, it doesn't matter. Um, putting shows up quite a bit here. You, you know, like I said, I don't need distance. So what good drives is, is guys that are hit the fairway. It's not taking length. It's saying either you hit the fairway or you hit the first cut. And on your approach, you hit every time. So who does that the best? Um, around the green, it does show up. A lot of guys will get their eagles or their birdies actually chipping in around here. The greens are not that complex. I didn't really get into that. They're pretty, I say, humdrum. Uh, they're just smaller, so that's kind of their protection. And, of course, there's going to be little slight nuances and breaks, but it's not like super undulaty uh, slope going on. Those procs to the pins that I already talked to you about, uh, 150 to 175 shows up 25% of the time. And then 175 to 200 shows up 22% of the time. So you add that up over 50%, around 50% of the time, your approach shots are coming 150 outside. And you got to remember, take away four par fours. I'm sorry, four par threes. And there you go. 
Uh, there's those long par, par fours I was mentioning. It is six of those that come in between 450 and 500. And also what I'm plugging in because they're already, I'll be going through and we'll see the birdie kind of index when I look at the um, kind of sneak peek, the dashboard on these guys. Um, but birdie or better opportunities, I'm throwing that in there too, just to see the guys that are getting these opportunities more than not. All right, so what I did is, uh, as usual, let's go over the past winners or stroke gain data for the last three events here. Again, this is a focus at TPC Southwind. And so this shows right here, of course, here was the guys that actually made the uh, playoffs. There's Harris English, I mentioned that fell back, same with Bryson DeChambeau, who again, on Sunday looked like those would be the guys that would be competing for the win. And what did they do very well? Well, you can kind of see, except for Cam Smith, uh, which, you know, he did a ton of it with a putter and around the green, which is typical Cam Smith, everybody else kind of lit it up with the irons and the putter was huge. And then funny enough, you get kind of a smattering of did off the tee matter or not. And that goes back to, I'm not so concerned with distance. Just guys, give me guys in the fairway that, you know, can then have a better shot on their approach. So again, I would kind of wait approach and putting on this one. And then funny enough, if you go one year back when Justin Thomas won this thing, it actually kind of shocked me because I couldn't remember the last time I saw somebody actually win a golf tournament with losing strokes to the field with the putter, of course, which we saw at RBC Heritage with our buddy Jordan Spieth. Um, but here you go. Here's a perfect example. And he did it all on approach and around the green. And so, of course, he had to be chipping in quite a bit uh, off this if he was missing that much with the putter. But you also have Brooks Kepka do the exact same thing. You had Ches Reeve, who did awesome with the irons, but again, almost lost five strokes to the field and came in six, which that's crazy to me. So here you could, again, you could just state, well, around the green a little bit, but really irons. And it seems like off the tee was a little more pursuing. I'm not saying, again, that we wouldn't want guys that are good with the putter. It's just kind of interesting that that flip of how many guys that made what the top 10 actually lost strokes with the putter. And then also side note, when I saw Tom Lewis, wow, I haven't seen that name in a while. And if you've been doing this for a while, if you guys remember, I, I believe right, he was what, uh, from the, the European tour, uh, but really just kind of popped up out of nowhere here. So, all right, the last one we'll look at, which would be 2000, what, uh, 18? No, 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 19. You got Bruce Kepka who won the same, which again, totally forgot that. Uh, but we don't have to worry about him. But now look at the switch with the putter. Almost gained, you know, nine and a half strokes on the field with the putter. Uh, still solid off the tee and approach. But, man, yeah, if you do something like that, you are going to definitely differentiate. Back when Webb Simpson was Webb Simpson, you know, not gaining off the tee, but doing it with irons and putter. Uh, Leishman, almost the same thing, not off the tee, but irons and putter. You know, Rory actually kind of lost, funny enough, here with irons, but did it with off the tee and putting, which that's kind of unique. But... You know, we saw a bit of that with Rory this year uh, with that kind of 125 end struggles. Um, so, again, where I land on all this is if I was going to take away is, again, for sure, approach is key as always. I still think putting is key. I think around the green is a little bit. And I literally believe off the tee um, would be the one that I would slight if I had to wait against a model. All right. So with all that said, I did create a custom model for you guys, as I always do. And we're going to look through some different things to find out who we might want to be interested in playing. The first one's always recent form. And of course, with what we just went over, I weighted approach heavily at 25%. So a quarter of the model is weighted on approach. And then ball striking is coming in at 20%. So again, that's off the tee. And of course, hitting your irons and your iron shot or approach shot to the green. I got putting at 10. It is key that you have to hit fairways here. I don't care how long you are, but just be accurate. So I got that at 15%. Put around the green at five, that prox 150 to 175, that I believe came in around almost 25%. At 5%, and he had that 175 to 200, around 20%. Those long par fours, and then birdie or better gained. Um, because, like I said, we, as I mentioned, Harris English got the 20 under. Uh, guys still are going to need to score here. It's not a walk in the park course, but they can, I, you know, easily will hit the high teens, I believe, uh, depending on the weather conditions. So, with all that said, without any filters on, this is purely looking at the last six tournaments. Let me take that back. Uh, it would actually be the last because I did 36 rounds, which is a little longer than usual, but that's near here. There, It's to actually look at the last nine tournaments or 36 rounds of golf these guys have played. And against that model, Tony Finau, of course, with the recent two wins. Uh, you got Rory who won the RBC. You got Scotty, who's been still playing solid golf, even though he really kind of struck early on in the year. You got Shane Lowry. You got Xander, JT, Fitzy, who, of course, won what our U.S. Open. You got Victor Hovland. Which I feel like has made a pretty good comeback. Corey Connors has been steady all year. 
You got Mito that fell apart with at the PGA. You got Russ Henley, who's been, again, showing up and knocking on the door. John Rahm, who just, I don't think, has been in that good of form all year. That's my own personal opinion. I mean, he won the Mexico Open with, like, the worst field in golf. You got Cam Smith, who I think, I don't know, I think is right up there to be player of the year, right there with Scotty Scheffler. Um, of course, is your player's champ. He won the Open. He also won that crazy shootout with John Rahm to start out the year at the Tournament of Champions. You got Max Holm, who's also coming with a few wins, and Brendan Steele, who just kind of keeps knocking on the door but just can't make the putts when necessary, which you can see that right here. All right, so if you want to look at purely what are these guys done at TPC Southland, and I've kept it to the last three tournaments um, or last, last 12 rounds they played on this course. Now, this could be some of these guys, could, this could be included for the WGC event, and this could also be 2018 or prior when it was not a WGC event. But either here, it's on this course and is relatively new. Uh, information and funny enough Ches Revy of course who won was it the Barracuda recently uh, popped up number one if you look at just the last 12 rounds on TPC Southwind against my model then you got Webb Simpson JT Hideki Stuart Sink Joel Damon Lowry Adam Scott Luke List Trey Mullenix Scott Stallings Seamus Power it's been a little while it feels like we've seen Seamus I guess it's the open James Hahn who's popped up on uh, some Sundays Killer Keith, not a bad tournament last week at the Wyndham, and then Russell Knox, who typically cannot make a putt. That is your top 15 guys when you, I guess, my model for the TPC Southland, who's done the best over, like I said, the last few tournaments they played here. All right, then also, as usual, because irons or approach is so key, uh, this is kind of what I call the Iron Man, who right now, over the last 24 rounds, so that'd be the last six tournaments, again, no filters turned on here, so we're not looking at Bermuda or anything like that, um, but just purely who's done the best on approach. And that would be uh, Russ Henley, Finau, Xander, Rory, Steele, Lowry, HV3, Burns, Cam Smith, Stallings, Mito, Hubbard, Davis, Hideki, and JT. And then what I wanted to look at for myself was, okay, who did the best at the 150 to 175? And funny enough, Mark Hubbard, who, like I said, did amazing, had an amazing kind of alternate tournament, the Barracuda and the Barbasol. And then, of course, I think he missed the cut, if I remember right, at the Wyndham, because I think he was one of my picks. Uh, but then you have Justin Rose up there, J.J. Spawn, Keegan, Morikawa, Jordan, Cam, Lee Hodges, Matt Scheffler, Damon, Johnny Vegas, Will Z, Mullinex, Anibon Lahiri, who did show up at the Wyndham, and, of course, the players, and that's about it for this year. Shane Lauer, J.T., and then J.T. Poston. So the last one I looked at is at 175 to 200, and funny enough, Ches Revy comes up number one, uh, which is interesting, right? Because he was, if you looked at the past three tournaments that have been played here, uh, that's what the data I'm guessing is that Ches actually was uh, number one. Uh, Siwoo, funny enough, Kim comes popping up, Finau, Tom Hoagie, who's been kind of leading this category. He, at one time, I think, was leading to 150 to 175, too. He was having crazy irons in the beginning of the year. Brendan Steele, Tyler Duncan, Kurt Kitayama. It's been a little while, I feel like, since I've seen that name. Victor Hovland, Rory, Lee Hodges, Cam Davis, Lowry, Streelman. Colm Tarrant, who's also had some really good Sundays, so keep an eye out him for Sunday Showdown. You got Fitzy, C.T. Pan, and Davis Riley, who uh, was one of my picks last week. and did have a bad showing at the Wyndham. Was uh, also had a bet on him. I was kind of hoping he could pull out a win before the end of the year. All right, so a little different. Usually when I show you guys, like, best Bermuda putters, I actually turned down also fast Bermuda because sometimes there is some courses they play that has slower Bermuda, hence these are fast Bermuda greens. I wanted to see over the last 24 rounds they played on fast Bermuda, which is going to show up different courses like maybe the Arnold Palmer, kind of back to the Florida swing courses, I would guess. It would come up maybe the PGA Championship. Um, that was also, if I remember correctly, at uh, what Southern Hills was Bermuda. Anyways, you got Chesson Hadley, Kevin Kisner, who just blew up. Him and McCar uh, Denny McCarthy were my picks last week for Wyndham, and that was bad news. Those guys are in both bad form right now, so I'll be totally out on those guys probably for the rest of the year. Kisner sucked all year, um, but I just thought, you know, horses for courses, he would uh, we could turn it on. You got Sammy Burns, Cam Smith, Stallings, Sebez, of course, Tom Kim pops up here. Billy Ho, Alexander Noren, seems like it's been a while since I said his name. Callum Turin, Dean McCarthy, Adam Hadwin, Kevin Tway, Fitzy, Leishman, Will Z, Lucas Herbert. So, Nobody on this list shocks me. Uh, all pretty damn good putters, especially, of course, Bermuda Burns, uh, Bez, you know, Horschel does well. 
if Daniel Berger was literally on this list, uh, he'd be right up there too. Okay, so now let's get into comparable courses. And I tell you guys, sometimes I really like comparable courses and there's sometimes where I just think it's pretty much useless. Just to let you know, um, I'm heavily weighting comparable courses to my decisions and my picks. Uh, so I'll let you in on that right now because there is a certain type of course that you know lends and tends to be good for certain people. And this fits right into it, TPC Southwind, if you think of the Charles Schwab, even the Honda, RBC, the Sony Open where they play a wild layup. It's that, I wanna say it's a strategic course. Um, you have to be very accurate. I think length is no advantage here. Now I felt like RBC Heritage changed it a little bit, but you gotta remember they had those hurricanes. That course definitely widened from a fairway perspective comparative to years past. Um, but I'm still using it. But where I'm going with it, I just want to let you know right off the bat. When we get into the picks section, I'll talk a little more about it. But I am definitely waiting. So I like this list quite a bit. It's probably influenced quite a bit. Also, my going to be my picks. But of course, if you take those courses uh, that you see listed here, the ones on the left are all Bermuda and all have a little water. They're all tight. And then if you get over here, I think they're all very similar too, very tight. But they're just bent greens on all these. What we're seeing is the only difference. So I would say if you wanted to say your top five um, courses from a comparable, it'd be here over on the left. I also plug these in. Like I said, I think they all fit. It's just different green type surfaces. Um, against my model, looking at the past, you know, nine tournaments they played on these tracks, Russ Henley, number one, makes total sense, right? He almost won the Sony Open this year, and it just this is his kind of course. Uh, HV3, right? His best showings ever on tour, on the PGA Tour, has been at the RBC Heritage. Uh, Adam Svensson also had a chance to win at the Sony and has done very well. <coughs> uh, Colin Cor Of course, Colin Morikawa, his game would suit all these. Hopefully his game is back to where uh, we need, at least from an iron perspective, and he's back to fading or at least knows which way he's hitting it. Um, Patrick Cantley, you got Corey Connors, Hideki Masiano, Shane Lowry, who's also done very well. Brett had a chance to win the, at the RBC this year. You got Rory Emiliano Grio, great ball striker. Lucas Glover, both these guys I'm actually interested in from a fantasy pick. Webb Simpson, which, again, if, if Webb was playing Webb Golf, uh, and I'm so happy that I stayed off him, at least did not pick him, even though it was the Wyndham. That was one bomb that I got you guys around if you stuck with my picks. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, Brendan Steele, and Sebastian Munoz. All right, and I was hoping to get this show out on Monday, but it actually did not happen, so I thought I would combine both shows, and I wanted to get you guys my favorite bets, at least from a higher odd perspective. I've only got, I think, one bet in here that's kind of lower odds, but we got uh, Russ Henley. I believe he's around 50 to 1. You got Chez Revy, I think it's 100 to 1. Emilio Agrino, same thing, like 100 to 1. Corey Connors, I think it was 65 to 1. So Victor Hovland was my lowest odds, if you want to say, or more favorite to win. I think he was around 35 to 1. All these on DraftKings Sportsbook. And then Sebastian Munoz, again, I think he was around that 100 to 1 number. So those were the shots I took uh, yesterday morning. And I'm not sure how much more betting I'll actually do on this. Maybe one more on the favorite side. But um, that's my score, my card going in. And with that said, let's go over. We'll do some quick analysis on these guys, let you know who I'm picking, and we'll do ownership projections, weather, kind of wrap it all up, summarize, and then get you guys out of here. So let's go jump over to Fantasy National and look at some of these guys. Okay, so I've hopped over into Fantasy National, and as always, my quick plug is if you are putting any kind of dollars on Fantasy Golf or even betting on golf you need to use this tool it is the best out there it can do everything that you want to look at slice and dice the data and always come up and give you at least from a historical perspective the best selections to make but of course as we all know that's not how these golf tournaments are won all right we're going to be focusing on DraftKings pricing but if you use FanDuel Yahoo whatever you still use these picks you're just going to have a different pricing and I'm going to be looking at the last 36 rounds of data again because we have quite a bit on these guys so I'll take a little larger sample uh, than usual I already mentioned that these picks have been you know looked through and selected because of how they've done on those comparable courses now there might be an outlier here or there but out of the top 20 
that is going to be where these guys come in as the best on those comparable courses. So I'm not using any filters, but I just, as I always state, I've already kind of done some pre-analysis to get to this point. I'm also, as usual, we have this mini model. So I took out of that larger model, the five keystroke gain categories, and they are weighted. Approach is like somewhere around 30%, ball striking pretty close to. The putting and the props, I think around 15 each. Um, and then good tribes is also up there in the 20. So just so you understand how the weighting goes there. You're also gonna be able to see salary, projected ownership, cuts made, um, where they rank against that model I just talked about. And then, you know, what have they been doing over the last few months from a putting perspective, or I'm sorry, actually, well, yeah, putting, but more, have they been making birdies or not? So of course we wanna see this big green curve on the way up. And then recent results. And then when, if I click over here, the problem is that this tournament history is not off TPC Southwind. So honestly, this is gonna be worthless. now. If you wanted to put any weight on, hey, well, this is the first FedEx Cup event, how have they done in prior history, then this actually would matter. Um, but honestly, it really, as far as I'm concerned, has no value for us. So we probably would not be looking at that. I'll try to make sure that we click over and see what, you know, we can look at again what they did at um, the St. Jude for the WGC event. All right, and then you've got quite a few decisions uh, right here. I mean, you got Rory coming at 11, so we got one guy at 11,000. And then we got what, uh, let's see, six at the 10,000 range. Um, and it's pretty rare. Typically, I don't usually like, I've stated this, and it feels like, I guess recently, I have been playing more of the guy at the top price tag, at least from a DFS perspective. Um, but I'm actually, funny enough, gonna go with the top two that I really like. And we'll dive into a little bit more. And like I said, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. I mean, a lot of these guys, all of them at the top, you can make, a good stance on why or why not you want to play them my narrative and or the way that i'm going with this and leaning is on comparable courses because i had to find something and i do believe this course is unique in how it plays comparative to just a you know a possible bomb and gouge or just even a longer course where you need the length funny enough the bmw where they'll be playing next at that course i think it's in wilmington um i think it's around 75 7600 yards little different than what this course is going to play like all right so with that said you know if you want to look at rory we already know he's been playing great he has showed up at the open at a third of course he won the rbc canadian uh he did play the travelers which is kind of shocking for rory but he had a t19th and is not a bad comparable course also he's been an amazing form the putter's been going i don't think like i said anything else i need to sell you've been watching golf you know rory has been kicking ass this year and it you know what flipped was that 100 125 and he started to hit that better and then also the putter was, you know, just really starting to make, we could take a quick look at that. If you want to see, you know, I always do this for you. It's a driving distance. We already know he's one of the longer guys on tour. It's, it's his weapon. He's also pretty accurate, even with that kind of length. Bermuda over the last 12 months is his worst putting surface, but still all positive. And I mentioned this right here that, you know, you can look at the last, we don't, can't see the open. Uh, but if I remember correctly watching that, he did make quite a few putts. Uh, but the RBC gained six strokes, two strokes. So he's been gaining a lot with the putter. And for me, that is a big difference um, than earlier on. Of course, he also won to kind of kick off the season at the CJ Cup. And you can see early on, he was also gaining with the putter, but kind of fell back here a little bit uh, in the Florida swing. Okay, the next guy we fall to is Scotty, and I like him. And I want to let you guys know that you're going to be like, wait a minute, he's got you know two of the most expensive guys. You're going to see that I have a ton of six and 7,000 guys. So I'm kind of like, almost stars and I want to say scrubs because we have, you know, it's a little unique, right? We have the top 125 players for the season in a field. So it's, you can get a ton of value. And so I like some of the upper guys and then I like some of the lower guys. And that's just where I'm fitting in from a DFS perspective. But again, Scotty Scheffler, uh, I have no issues with him. If you want to see what he's done, just purely in the FedEx cup for the first round, there you go. But again, that's not on this course. And again, I think it holds no weight. I uh, had a good showing at the U.S. Open. Of course, what, missed the cut at the PGA Championship because I played him in one and done. Um, and did miss the cut at the Scottish Open, but, you know, not a bad showing. So you could say if you want to put some weight at the Open in the Scottish that, you know, hey, there's a reason why you want to skip Scotty. But I, I have no issues with that. And then, again, should probably have done this, and I can go do it for Rory. But if I went and plugged... Let me just do that. Maybe it'll come this way if it doesn't. So there's the Charles Schwab, which I think is a great comparable course. Let me plug in St. Jude. Let's see. 
So you can see he's had some nice finishes. And that's, you know, funny enough, I wish Fantasy National could have set pulled this in. This is what you need to know, not what they did at the Northern Trust years prior. Uh, we can also go look at the RBC. Let's just see. Never played at the Heritage. What about the Honda? Never played at the Honda. What about the Sony? So funny enough, he has not played in a whole lot of courses that were my comparable. So of course, what I'm doing that. Let me go look at Rory. I'm just curious how much he's actually played. Let's plug in St. Jude. So you can see he's had very good showings at the St. Jude. And then we'll put the RBC. He played the Heritage once. That's a while ago. What about the Sony? He doesn't play the Hawaii swing either, I guess, except for maybe the TOC. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to even go through the process of pulling those up for those guys. All right. But anyways, I like those two up front. Again, I have no issues with Xander. You know, had that nice little run here, one to Scottish and a Traveler. So almost, again, a back-to-back. -back. Saw a little bit, of course, with the Finau of that going on. But um, I don't know. Just what I, I, I guess, you know, or my preference is I'd rather go to Cam. Cam's my guy. Of course, I already mentioned what he did here last year. Of course, he just he's coming out the win at the Open. So we know his game is in pretty, pretty good form. You know, we haven't seen him in a few tournaments. And um, we can go click on Cam. The one knocks against him can be he can get wayward with the driver, but where he's elite is with the putter in the short game. We, I think we all know that, and this shows a good representation where typically he could lose some strokes there. And let's click. So funny enough, he missed a cut at the RBC Heritage. I forgot that, but so he's won the Sony. I believe he, he won, and I think he also, I thought he came in pretty high up a couple times at the Sony. The Sony is a great comparable. There's the WGC St. Jude. Why don't we just plug into St. Jude? We'll just do that for all the guys that I'm picking so you can see. So a five and a 12th, uh, pretty solid. Had a chance to win this thing last year. Actually, when I say that, I mean the WGC event. Patrick Cantley, you know, we saw what he did last year in the FedEx. Uh, the guys had a ton of top 10 finishes. For some reason, I, I do like Patrick Cantley. I bent greens better. I'm just going to kind of stick with that. But of course, he won the BMW and the Tour Championship. Just kind of, you know, had a kind of humdrum season in 2021 until towards the end. You know, he won the Memorial. Um, you know, that kind of default win, we'll call it. But with all that said, I don't know. I'm going to kind of pass on Patrick um, JT, who's actually a past winner here. I, I already showed you that or talked about it. But I'm going to pass on him again a, a bit about the driver for me, um, and just make it a stance. John Rahm, you know, just. Seems like his game's frustrating. You can also see this, a 48, a 55th, a 34. Now, I think a lot of the people are going to jump. I know, I know even from a betting side, I think I think you can get Rahm at like 30 to 1, which I'd rather bet him at that price. I've not done it, and I don't even know that number is still out there, but um, I would kind of almost lean that way. But then, then the guy that I'd rather go with is Fitzy. And again, just his game fits these kind of courses. Um, again, probably leaning a little more on the short game around the green and the putting. You can also see Bermuda is by far his best putting surface. And if I just kind of click on this, we can just see real fast. So there's the St. Jude back in 2019. There's RBC Heritage. You know, Valspar, that's, that is, uh, of course, Bermuda. Get the WGC St. Jude again. I can just plug that in just so you can see. I said I'd do that for each of the guys. So a fourth and a sixth, and then a 48th and a 57. So kind of a mixed bag, but I, I would tend that this course should definitely fit Fitzy. Tony Finau, you know, I just, I think I was, let me think about this. I want to, I think the rocket I was off him, but I was on him, I believe, for the 3M. And I just didn't think he'd win back to back. And so who knows? He also, of course, won, we'll call it really his official first win, was the first leg of the FedEx last year at the Northern Trust. Um, you know, you can make a lot of reasons why you want to play Tony Finau. I think it's more just, I'm going to try to pivot a little bit. Again, taking the perspective of this is not a cash game. This is not like single entry. This is the large GPP fantasy, you know, 300K, uh, you know, $20 entry uh, kind of teams or players that I'm picking. So probably should have stayed that up the front, but I at least I'm stating it now. So no, I'm going to kind of pivot off Finau. Will Z, I just, I can't, I don't know. It would make total sense, right? I was all over Woolsey last week at the Wyndham and the putter again. It, it just, 
just was not good. And of course, not that this is a big issue, but you probably saw he split halfway through the tournament at the window with his caddy. And um, I think he, what, used his coach, and now he, I forgot who he plugged in. But he's got a caddy going forward. I, I'm not worried about that. It's not why. Um, again, when it came across uh, on the, the tournaments, and right, we still don't have a ton of data on Will Z. I mean, we got, what, two years now, a year and a half, whatever it is. Um, he just did not make it from a narrative of, you know, fitting that kind of comp. You know, Cam Young, which is kind of funny, I think if I remember correctly, right? Cam had a good showing at the RBC. Yeah, he had a third. Um, let's also just take a quick look. I just want to see where else, if there's something that I'm missing. So just the RBC. And we, again, we don't have a lot of data on Cam. But again, I like Cam when, you know, his weapon would be off the tee. And he's he's a good player all around. We've been waiting for him to get a win. I mean, I think Will Z and Cam are very similar of course, both coming out of Wake Forest, just I think Cameron Young's a better putter, um, especially with inside 10 feet. So that would be where that would kind of fall. So if I had to pick between the two, I would go with Cam Young. Jordan Spieth, right, won the RBC. Uh, I don't know. I His putter, man, I don't even know how many tournaments he could have won this year with how well he's, you know, strike the ball off the tee and approach. If he would have had just half of his putting, let's go take a look at Mr. Jordan Spieth. Um, there's a lot of reasons again why you could want to play Jordan. Well, yeah, I mean, this probably gives you the best. I mean, for the last 20, he was losing. We don't have any sight here, but you know, lost three at the PGA. Again, there's that lose two and a half and win the RBC. You know, lost again, a lot of this is on Bermuda too. Lost seven strokes at the Valero, three at the Phoenix. That's also the waste management. Bermuda Farmers is POA. Um, so that would be it. I mean, the one knock, of course, you know, funny enough, the drive's still showing, but I mean, he's been driving the ball, I think, really well. Uh, it would just be the putter, but it, again, if that flips, watch out. The guy that I'm kind of interested to play is Victor Hovland. Of course, he had that, you know, nobody wanted to play him. I believe I picked him for the Open. Um, he's kind of the prototypical player that I'm looking for here. So again, of course, you know, short game is a little, maybe not the greatest. Um, you can see the putter at least is showing up pretty well. But just his accuracy off the teeth, T and with distance, plus what he can do with the iron game, um, I'm all over. I actually, you know, I said I bet Victor, and if you know, I'm actually playing him from a one and done. I kind of got the, I saved him somehow. He, I didn't use him. Um, let's take a look here real quick. So you can look at the Mayakoba OHL. Like these are all, if it's not past Palm, very like Bermuda like Arnold Palmer. Um, Valspar's Bermuda. I'm just going like work day. Would that, that should have been Bermuda? Is that the nope? That was Murphy. I wasn't sure which work day that was. There was a WGC work day also, which was at Jack's course, one of Jack's courses at what uh, concession, which was Bermuda. Sorry, uh, but by the players, and then let's just go see what he's done at St. Jude. So funny enough, he has not had the greatest showing at TPC Southwind, but I don't, I would think his game is a great fit. So I'm not worried about it. I, I like everything I see from Victor. And funny enough, I've not played Morikawa or picked him. And I couldn't tell you how long. Honestly, I cannot remember the last time I picked Morikawa. There has been, of course, you can see he's missed, you know, three cuts. I need to look at him from a betting perspective, but I feel like I'm not getting a good enough number at last I checked. Um, but he had a good showing at the U.S. Open. The Charles Schwab, I think it's a great comparable, but didn't do that great. But, you know, I don't hold that much weight. And funny enough, he's not really had this kind of interesting cut-cut, which both of those events, I'm not sure what the heck that's pulling in. Let's go take a look at Morikawa real quick, though. See, Bermuda, definitely not his best surface, and you can see what's been the issue lately. Um, it's amazing how his game has kind of really trended south on what kind of, you know, of course, winning the majors he did right out of nowhere. And it's just if that putter flips or not. Let's just do this real quick. So WGC Mexico. There you go. That's the concession on Bermuda. That's actually what I was just talking about, Jack's course. Um, that would have been the bent. Or CJ Cup, the Summit Club that's bent. Also, I believe in Vegas, I think, if I remember correctly. There's a Schwab, so that's a great comparable course. There's a Deer. I don't think that's a bad one. RBC, Sony. I mean, 
I mean, of course, you know Collins game, right? I mean, it's fairways, greens. One at sometimes the best iron player, but like you, you know, he came out and said that you know he lost his fade, started to draw the ball some, so he's had a bit of a break. I'm hoping he's gotten that figured out. So I'm not worried about the ball striking. Um, you can see that 150 to 175 is still elite. It's the putter, and also I'm thinking projected ownership is going to be lower on him. You know, people are going to look at this. They're going to you know know what they've been seeing. Um, and so it's a little bit of differentiation. These two guys, I think, sh- should do very well, both of them, on this course. Burns, of course, right had a chance to win last year. No issues at all with Burns. He's, he's my kind of guy. You see, he's kind of fallen back a little bit here over the last four tournaments. Like I said, you can make an argument. Sun JM, right, had a good chance to win the Wyndham. Actually shocked me. He finally, you know, it's kind of flipped it around here, right, the 3M and the Wyndham. You can see the putter finally kind of, let's go take a look. I want to see what he did because uh, I had not looked at the stroke gain data from the Wyndham. Let's go check this out. So funny enough, he actually gained four strokes. When I watched him, I believe it was either Saturday, maybe it was Sunday, he was missing putts. Uh, I guess it was Sunday. So anyways, no issues again. Uh, Hideki, I'm terrified of. I I can't play Hideki with the draws and just everything that's been going on. I mean, of course, again, he made the playoff. He fits what I'd want in this. If it wasn't all this kind of craziness, with the DQ, the cut, the withdrawal. Of course, he had, what, the neck issues. I, I just don't know where his headspace is at. So also, right, the live tour, whole conversations. So that just for that reason, I'm out on Hideki. Uh, I'm going to go back to Shane Lowry, which I think is going to be a little unique. But if you look at what happened here with Shane Lowry, why he ended up with such a terrible finish, he lost 7.5 strokes putting. Um, the off the tee wasn't the greatest, but he really gained a lot with the irons. And, of course, if you were watching the fall swing, or I'm sorry, the Florida swing, of course, he was lighting it up uh, on Bermuda Green. So I have no issues to go back to him. You can see Ray's number two in my model. But, you know, I am kind of think also it's going to be a little sneaky differentiation play. Billy Ho, I like him. Um, You know, I kind of tweeted out, I don't know if you guys saw it, that, you know, in his presser, he stated that his game was rusty. Uh, Didn't really play anything since the Open. And you can see it. I think he came out like the first few holes. It was like, I don't think he made a birdie for like, I don't know. It took a while. He was not doing well. But on Bermuda, you can't really go wrong with Billy Ho. He fits this kind of track. I'm just curious what this says, which again doesn't mean. Let's go pull up Billy Horschel. I'm curious he didn't come up uh, because I would think the courses that I compared would be. So in the heyday, you know, he did very well at the St. Jude. Last couple, I mean, still not bad, not great, but you remember those are no cut events. Uh, let's see what RBC. It's not too bad if you look at recently. I mean, again, a couple a missed cut, a couple twenties. What else? What about the Honda? Yeah, so I mean, honestly, Billy Horschel is not a bad play at all. Um, I might sprinkle him in at some. Uh, funny enough, Joaquin Neiman actually didn't do too bad on my comparables. I was kind of uh, in and out on Joaquin, but I actually flipped to Tom Kim, um, you know, which is hilarious. Like I said, I picked him at what? The Rocket, I think, and then did not pick him for the Wyndham. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I love what I've seen out of this guy. It's just a hot hand. Uh, we'll see. See how that all fares out. Mad Max, you know, what? Um, I don't know. Again, again, you can make a ton of reasons. You know, actually, Terrell Hatton, I think, is a little more interesting play. He had a good showing at the Wyndham. Uh, I like his, you know, probably putting prowess. His irons have been kind of firing up. Let's go see what Terrell did also at the Wyndham. Of course, Bermuda's his best surface. Yeah, I mean, you know, gained off the tee a little bit about a stroke. Gained on the irons. Gained a tiny bit. So the putter, I do remember that. So I had him, I think, showdown. I did play showdown for Thursday and put him in. And the guy, I think, made like two birdies. And had a crap load of opportunities and just kind of sink a putt. I'm gonna go back to my boy Russ. Um, you know, I bet him again. I'm still kind of holding on to that hope. This fits him, this course, everything about Russ Henley on Bermuda used to be really good. And you know, showing that it's still his best surface, but the truth of the matter is old Russ boy has been struggling with the putter. The last time he gained was that we have at least uh as a note was at the players where he gained 2.3, but it was at least Bermuda. And, of course, at the Sony, he gained almost 6. So that's Bermuda. RSM he gained. Of course, this is going a while back, but 
So if Russ somehow can get that putter back to what Russ can usually do, watch out. And again, you can see leading and approach, and that's the number one stat that I'm looking at. And I just think this course fits him to a T. Aaron Wise, I picked him last week. No issues. Again, you can only pick so many guys. I picked Davis, uh, Davis Riley again, T13. No issues. I'm actually going to go back to Corey, even though you know he did not have that great of a showing. But again, fitting for me, the Victor Hovland, almost a little bit of the Morikawa, just amazing ball strikers. And what I do know is that uh, on Bermuda, he did have a bit of run with the putter earlier this year. At least that was what was in my brain. Maybe I'm lying. So he gained a little bit to Sony. Amex. Is that the Quinta? I think one of them is the Nicholas. So the stadium course, which I believe they played the last two days, is Bermuda. So anyways, I just, I, I'm going back again, looking for differentiation plays. I'm going to kind of skip through these guys. I like Keegan Bradley, honestly. He was in there. He was kind of a last-minute pull. No problem with Cbez. Adam Scott, no. Uh, I just can't do it. Mito, the putter. Chris Kirk, I think it's not a bad play at all. He actually fits this course and fits these kind of courses. I'm curious. Let me pull up real here quick. So there you go. A six. It's been a while since he's played here. So he never made, I guess, the cut for the WGC events. Um, but like if I go through like the RBC Heritage, kind of on and off on that. The RSM, I think he's, didn't he have a win there? Yeah, way back. One, maybe, maybe his first and only win. I think I actually picked him and bet money on him. Probably, you know, who knows? And he just missed a cut to RSM this year. What the Honda? Also had a good showing at the Honda. I think Chris Kirk could be a great play. I'll probably play some of him. You know, I'm going to go back to HV3. Of course, he missed the cut at the Wyndham. I believe he was a pick also of mine. So, again, talking about all of the damages that, that I picked last week. But uh, I just know his best showings have been on these kind of tracks. And he has done pretty pretty good damage. Uh, at least, you know, again, popping up at the RBC. So, we do this, right? His best two shows at the RBC, both Bermuda both kind of a, you know, you got to navigate the players, Bermuda, old TPC White, I believe that's actually Ben, OHL, HOL, John Deere, I think it fits. I mean, the players, like, those kind of courses, it just, again, seems like it lines up. Also, I like what he's doing with his irons. Just needs that putter, just, man, be consistent. So, Hith, I got no problems. Killer Keith, no. Webb, no. Uh, JT Post, I think, is a good play. I have no problems with that. I just didn't pick him. I picked him last week. Siwoo, just I, I don't know. I'm I just cannot play Siwoo is what I've come to learn. It just never works out. I think Adam Hadwin's not a bad play. Cam Davis, right, had a good showing also, I believe, at our uh, RBC, which kind of shocked me. Like I said, it was kind of the bomb. I'd say a little bit more on the bomber side. Let's go take a look at this. Yeah, he had a third. Other than that, he's done more damage. It seems like I'm bent. The Sony, the Honda, so right here, he's got a couple. But funny enough, he didn't actually gain any strokes there. What's his best? Service should, I mean, should be, well, there's Shriners. That's Bermuda. Northern Trust. What was that? That was been at Liberty National last year. Anyways, I mean, Cam Davis could be interesting. He always outscores kind of where he places. Norin, no, I can't do it. JR, I think Brian Harmon, uh, people were kind of interested in him last week, so I'll be curious if anybody goes back to him. He's actually be a good, if his projected ownership stays low, I think he's a great player. Let's go look at Brian Harmon. I, di I didn't even spend a second thinking about him, to be honest. So you can see Bermuda's his best surface. Very accurate. The distance. Putter's been maybe kind of on and off, but I bet you. So he's won. The John Deere, U.S. Open. I mean, it's the players. I think it's a good fit. The Amex, not bad. Greenbrier, again, it's going back a little ways. What's he done at the St. Juder? Hasn't had the best course history here recently, a 36. I don't know. I think he's a solid play. I will probably sprinkle in some Brian Harmon now that I look at it. Matt McNeely just feels like he's just been kind of lost. Scott Stallings, right? I've been just riding from a betting perspective. You know, he probably will end up doing very well here. Uh, let's go look at him. I, again, I didn't really do a whole lot of analysis on Scott. It's kind of one of those things I've been picking him so much. And he just has it. I mean, look at a 13th, a 10th, a 4th, and 8th. I mean, you can't really go wrong for that price tag. So I probably should have put him in, especially was he at price tag? Yeah, 7,100. I guess I'm going to go with Reeve instead, but man, the more I think about it, I might actually switch that over to Scott Stallings. <laughs> so 
might have a switch on the fly now that I sit here. I don't know. Of course, you're not seeing the win that Revy just had at the at the Barracuda. So I don't know. Those those two will be swapped in and out. We'll put it that way. Danny McCarthy, you know, I'm going to jump off this train now, and it'll probably come bite me in the ass. Probably the same with Kisner. Uh, I'm staying with Munoz. Like I said, he missed a cut. He came out with his shit. At one time, he was like five, six under uh, on the front. I don't know it was a front nine, but I mean, again, got the hot start. I think he ended up like, I think he double bogeyed or bogeyed towards the end. So he, he ended up like three or four under and then just melted. Let's go look at my buddy Munoz. He melted on a Friday. So, yeah, you're not seeing anything too great. Usually this number uh, is a lot better, and this can go either way with the putter. But that was his first event since the Open. I don't know. I'm a fan of Sebastian. I've talked about him blue in the face. Um, we'll see what tee times. Uh, if he's an early tee time, I like him for maybe a Monday leader even. All right. Uh, I'm going to kind of fly through these. Brennan Steele, been playing great golf. Just that putter will not flick for him. But if that happens, watch out. Emiliano Grillo, right? So this is kind of like a cut, a tee second, a cut, a tee second. Probably a better bet, which I did bet, you know, bet him than a fantasy, maybe a DraftKings play, but he's what I'm looking for. He's got that awesome ball striking and that putter, uh, which has been doing pretty well. Let's go take a look. I just want to kind of refresh the brain here. Yeah, so, you know, at the 3M Open, last time we saw him, he gained almost four strokes, four strokes at the John Deere. So if the putter goes, so does Grio, um, which is pretty still. Adam Long, I'd be curious if anybody goes back to him. You know, he was... I didn't pick him last week, but he was kind of a hot topic. A lot of people were picking him. And the model loves him, you can see. But, yeah, again, I think, let's go take a look. What did he do bad? He must have done a lot bad to miss the cut. Well, funny enough, I don't know. The only place he actually lost was, wait a minute here. It didn't actually come up. That's interesting. Huh. That must be a little quinky dink because we could see he withdrew. But for some reason, when I clicked on him, he did not have his Wyndham information. I don't know. Okay, nothing I can do about that. Um, Leishman, no. Kisner, no. Lucas. Funny enough, Lucas Herbert, for some reason I think of him, Bermuda does seem like his best putting surface. Well, it does show that. Where he has done, it seems like a little bit of damage. Of course, he won. And maybe that's why it sticks out in my head. His only win is on Bermuda, at Bermuda. I'm trying to see. Not a bad showing here last year. Not a terrible place, but I always think of him when it's real windy. I like to play him. Uh, Kuchar, this would make sense. Not a bad play. Of course, Mark Hubbard could have easily went back to him. I don't know. As soon as I don't play him, he'll have a good finish. So I probably will sprinkle him in. Of course, Hoagie showed up at the 3M Open kind of out of nowhere. Like, had like, what, six missed cuts in a row and then pop. Killer Moore out of nowhere, too. Had a really nice showing the last two tournaments. I think he'll probably be pretty chalky for that price tag when all is said and done with that recent kind of form smally right was a pick of mine last week did show up had a t13 for his price tag was worth it of course we all knew you know the background at the Wyndham grew up there member there brandon Wu, uh, again another asian that was right up there in the leaderboard uh t8 uh but the, also good ball striker out of stanford Brendan todd um i actually I don't know if i picked him but i think i bet him 100 to one i thought Wyndham would be a nice little spot for him i think this course is not a bad spot to play some Todd so he might get sprinkled we'll go back to Spenson even though you know I think well a bit like uh, what Tom Kim just threw some big numbers out there and I'm guessing hopefully his Wyndham stuff comes up let me see his stuff came up so he actually stunk everywhere that he's usually very good at on the ball striking side but still gained with the putter and as you see he's been gaining with the putter um that's pretty shocking and what you can see here is odd enough it seems like in every other tournament where he's gaining and then losing and gaining and losing. So he, you know, if you go on that path, Adam Svensson should have a nice little uh, tournament. So I will stay with my boy. Jaha had a nice showing kind of out of nowhere as far as I'm concerned. What was he, like rookie of the year, like 2013 or some crazy crap. He's been around for a while. Um, Lahiri, you know, again, I'm not going to jump on those trains. Stuart Sink just been playing some steady golf. So at 6,600, he's also, of course, what won the rbc heritage i think he's won the travelers and this is all recently let's go take a look at this so there's rbc one uh last year it's done a, a really good at the harbor uh harbor town because that's also the mci he won which is at harbor town and then there's fortnet which that's actually was a safe way so he did not win the travelers 
There's St. Jude. I don't know. I think this course kind of fits them. Same thing, the putter. It's been pretty ugly. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to – I like him. I'm going to play him. Funny enough, Matthew Neesmith just kept showing up all over when I put in the comp courses. And, of course, also Valspar, you know, where he had a chance to win this year. Uh, Bermuda. Let's just click on it here. So there's his best showing on the PGA. He had a 12th at RBC, then RSM. So that must be why. So I was using Sea Island, uh, the plantation course. All right. Anyway, so I like Neesmith and Joel Damon. Again, this is a comp course. We look at where Joel, of course, Bermuda. What redhead has won at what Corrales this year? No, last year, I should say. Um, but the deer, I don't think it's a bad comparable. What's he done at the St. Jude? He's been 18th back in prior to a WGC event, and even in WGC at a 20th. So I like Joel Damon. I think he could be a little sneaky, as you see. His ownership's pretty low. He hasn't been. You know, a 69th, a cut, a cut, an 81st, uh, but then had that, you know, T10 at the U.S. Open. So how quickly we fall out of graces. And out of nowhere, smell the glove, Glover. This is going to be my crazy uh, little differentiation play. Just been brutal uh, lately. A lot of it's been the putter. A lot like Emilio Agrio. I always said they're very similar. Awesome tee to green. Just ridiculously can be very bad with the putter. Uh, you can see that represented here. But, of course, the John Deere is a good comparable. The Honda, the Honda, the Sony. I mean, when uh, when it comes to this course should fit him, let's go look at the St. Jude before I put my foot in my mouth. So, I mean, he's only played here twice. in a 57th uh, in a WGC event, so not great there. But, you know, if, if somehow, again, that putter flips, uh, he could be really good. Dougie Gim. Could be interesting, right? I just think of the players on Bermuda. He's done well there twice. And that's it, guys. Uh, I, I wanted to make this a little short. I don't want to spend too much time, but that's where I'm kind of lying. I'm just telling you guys, a lot of it's on the comparable course side. So take that with a grain of salt if you like the way I'm leaning or, you know, you might have your own. So, all right, real quickly, let's go look at ownership projections. So I apologize. I'm not going to be able to put a show out tomorrow on Wednesday before the lock. But, you know, we have about 3,000 lineups generated. So we're getting at least an idea right now where the ownership is going to fall. That's all I'm really sharing with you. Do not, you know, take this to heart because this number should be around 9,000 when it's all said and done. So there are going to be like 3x these lineups made. But, again, we have enough information. So you can see Finau is where the chalk's fallen. No shocker. That's a really nice price tag for what he's been doing. Uh, same with Sun JM. Uh, Will Z. So that's your top three. Then you kind of fall down as more they have more expensive guys. Um, I'm trying to think who's the least owned. Corey Connors, people are kind of seeing that. Russ Henley, you know, no shocker. I knew, you know, I was kind of trying to stay off. And I might, you know, limit my exposure to Mr. Tom Kim. Just know that, you know, with that win, everybody's just going to be ooh and on and that this guy can never lose again. So Scotty Shuffler is down there a little bit. Fitzy is at 13. I'd be curious where Hideki actually ends up when it's all said and done. I'm not going to touch him with a 10-foot pole, and, and it could come back to haunt me. Of course, he won the Sony. I mean, everything makes sense, but he's just been having such a weird run lately that I'm just I'm kind of over it. Uh, kind of coming out of nowhere, I've not picked Morikawa. I, I literally, I cannot tell you the last tournament that I picked Colin Morikawa. So I'm going to kind of shift it up here. Um, going to Lowry, just see where he falls around. You know, I thought he'd be a little lower, but we'll see where it all comes in. Steals around 10%, Victor Hovland at 10%, Grio less than 10, Revy, Cam Smith, HV3 is less than 5, Neesmith, so now we're kind of getting to the differentiators, Munoz, if he pops, there's Fenson, Sink, let me do this real quick, I'm going to refresh, because it's probably been about, a, I don't know, maybe an hour, I don't know how much, all right, so I gave a little more. Let's start to see you here real quick. See if anything really changed. I don't think so. I'm just going to slow scroll for you. Try to see it. Let me work my way down and just see if anything sticks out that I think is interesting. I was curious how much Ricky Fowler would get play at 6,400. I mean, that's crazy when he's now down in the 6,000 range, but that's where his game's been. Max Pengreevy had a nice showing. Um, he's you know, less than one. Siwoo Kim. Wow. 
People are pissed off at Siwoo Kim. Not getting the love at 7,300. That's interesting. Uh, there's my Svensson. Not getting a lot of love either, so I'm excited about playing him. Not too different, actually, of a play of a Siwoo Kim, to be honest. All right, I think that's enough. It gives you some ideas where the ownership's falling. Like I said, I wanted to get that for you. I'm not going to be wrong. And then weather, really, all I want to tell you is this is the place that I'm pulling from Windfinder, Olive Branch Airport. It's the closest location I can see, and it's pretty close to the course. Honestly, I see nothing, but I get we're so early out. It's Tuesday right now. Um, you know, right now, if I go look at the Thursday super forecast, it looks very prototypical. Wind will pick up a little bit in the afternoon. And that's all I really have. We can go, let me look just real fast. I just go to forecast. It should give me a little more uh, outside. So yeah, I mean, I don't see anything. You know, Friday afternoon, I mean, you could make a stretch and say that uh, if you played late morning, maybe there'd be a hair, but there's just not enough there. So it looks like the weather is going to be great. Probably, what was the heat? I'd have to guess. I think it'd be a little warm. Yeah, it could be in the 90s. So it's going to be hot there. All right, let's go jump out and sum this up for you guys. Okay, so to summarize my top 20 picks, as always, I first give you my Fab Five. One with Rory, of course, won the RBC. Canadian Open has been playing great golf. Um, the putter's been working. H tough tough price tag, right? I think he's, if I remember right, the highest price. But, again, you can make it work. I'm going to probably be doing, like I said, a little more stars and scrubs. Hence, putting in Scheffler. I think he's going to be a little unique in Cam. I feel like these top three will be limited. Compared to the Finals, you know, I, I think it'd be a little different to start with these guys. I think Fitzy, um, not the, always never the sexiest play, but I think it's a perfect fit for this course. You could literally start your builds if you want to go short game putting masters. Of course, Fitzy has been, you know, doing a little better off the tee. And then Victor Hahn, which is kind of a flip on at least both of these guys, where when I think of Victor, I mean, I think a lot of people think he's a worse putter than he is. Uh, it's always the chipping is the knock, but around here, yes, you could take advantage. And it is smaller greens, but I don't think. If there's anything significant that he couldn't handle. Uh, I look for him to have a good showing. So that'd be my top five guys I'm going with. And then the kind of round out would be my kind of guys, second, third guys going in. Morikawa, which crazy uh, that he's priced at where he's at, but his game has been tough. But this is a guy we all know. If it flips, watch out. And I kind of just feel like this is a good spot for him to flip it. Uh, of course, Shane Lowry, I think people, a lot of people will be off him from his bad showing at the Wyndham. No matter what ownership projections show, I have a hard time thinking that you're going to click him over. So, and I just keep thinking about how well he played in the Florida swing. Also has done well at this course. Russ Henley, perfect fit, perfect course for Russ. Corey Connors kind of, for me, fits under that Victor Hovland mold, but has been putting better. And then, you know what? Like I said, I'm going to pop Tom Kim. Funny enough, Keegan Bradley was here. And the more I just thought about it, I just, I just could not play or not pick Tom Kim uh, for you guys. And for me, if he actually, everything looks like this guy is a serious contender. And then funny enough, for somehow unsung, we'll just go ahead with Emil Grio. I guess he did not get uh, animated to come in. So we're out the bat. Uh, I like some Grio. Give me HV3. Best show ones are at RBC Heritage. Chez Rivi also has done very well. Kind of fits this course. And a great iron player. I think, you know, Chev is, was kind of just off the radar. I don't know if he was injured or what. But this guy one time, a couple years ago, like, led the field in birdies. No joke. Um, so this guy can play. And I just think, just kind of out of sight, out of mind. But, you know, like I said, also, he won the Barracuda, which no one really probably watched the Barracuda. Also, Sebastian Munoz kind of fits in with that team no putt, and which Chez can have issues with the putter too. Good ball striker, but can have issues. Steel, so really, if you look at this whole team, uh, pretty good ball strikers, terrible putters. But all of them have shown that they can win and putt, um, even Barner. All right, so one of my cheapy plays will be like 7,000 or below. I'm going back to Adam Svensson. I like Stewie Sink, the way his game's been, and again, has done well on these kind of tracks. Neesmith, I think, is probably a little weird. I, you know, like I said, just he sh has shown up over and over on these type of courses. Typically, I would, you know, think of him more on a longer course where I need his, you know, kind of off the tee and long irons. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with it. Joel Damon typically does well on these kind of tracks from Bermuda. And then Lucas Glover, kind of the sneaky, less than 1%. A couple of these guys should be less than 1%. Uh, well, definitely him, That, but he's been just horrible putting, but the guy's done well in these kind of courses, and uh, if that putter flips, I think he's one of the better ball strikers out there. And with that said, that's it. Uh, I mentioned, like I said, for the FedEx, I'm only going to do one show. I do plan on trying to do something for the BMW. I will probably do nothing for Tour. 
the tour championship, right? I think it's 30 guys that make it to that field. A few guys that you like, it's 30 dudes. The BMW, I think, what, cuts down to 75. I didn't go over all that with you guys, but of course, we're 125, and it's 122 because we have a few guys out. That'll be cut down to 75 guys, and then I believe it's 30, if I remember correctly, that go on to the Tour Championship. Hopefully you enjoy. Like I said, I think all of our brains, I've already mentioned this, is kind of getting a little more focused on football. It has been, you know, we had the super season last year. It's just been a long season. I think we're all just kind of winding down. But I'm excited. I mean, you know, the FedEx playoffs, I, I don't know. I, I don't dislike, and I don't like super like, but, you know, it's kind of interesting to see who will move on. So I'm all over it, and uh, do me the honor, as always, click that like button, share it with anybody else. If for some odd reason you're at the FedEx Cup playoffs and been watching me and not subscribed, why don't you become a subscriber? Make sure that I'm doing this come uh, the fall season. And last but not least, follow me on Twitter, and uh, if I can help you with anything, hit me up on DFS Golf Guru or YouTube comments, and I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy the FedEx start of the FedEx Cup playoffs, and I'll talk to you guys next week.